Good morning. It is uh, about three weeks into May and uh, I'm excited because this is the first time this year, I think I go this way, that I'm going uh, late spring, summer salmon fishing on the Capilano River. Going to a spot I've never been to before and uh, I've heard it's good for fly fishing. So yeah, just going down some switchbacks. Water's up a little high because we've had a lot of warm days and runoff, but uh, they tend to be letting out the dam at night and then it recovers uh, pretty quickly between uh, 7 and 9 a.m. So I checked the water level this morning. It's looking pretty good. As I get down in here, I'm just take a minute, get on the water safely. Um, we'll walk through what we're throwing today, some safety tips and uh, yeah, see you on the water. One thing I like to do when I go fishing, uh, just to maximize my time on the water, is I actually fully prep my rod at home. You can see we're going to start with this little uh, olive with kind of orange accents and a, a little orange bead head um, woolly bugger that I actually salvaged from a tree at Rice Lake recently. And um, I'm throwing that off of about, I think, seven feet of uh, 10 pound uh, fluorocarbon, which is on the end of my seven foot of TX sink tip, um, which I think will be a pretty good choice. This water is not ripping. Uh, it's slow, it's cooling, it's, it's eddying. Uh, hopefully they don't release the dam again. They did it last night, so I should be fine. But uh, actually, before I forget, I'm going to go put on my safety device. Hold on, guys. This is a uh, personal flotation device, PFD, and this river can rise with no warning at all, so and it can be pretty deadly. It's killed people before, and I want to avoid that, so. All right, there's that woolly bugger. You can see it a little better now. Yeah, let's get fishing. Okay, my fly is floating. So right away, I think we're gonna change over to what I caught my only ever coho salmon on um, a year and a half ago, which was a jig sculptzilla from my buddy Bob. His flies and the link to his store are in the description. Here is the jig sculptzilla. It's a jig sculpin pattern. It's got a a weighted bead head, it's tied jig style, um, but we're just going to strip that on the end of our rig here. Um, oh yeah, it floats much, or sorry, it, uh, it sinks much faster, which is what I want. But my plan here is kind of every cast, let it sink for probably 10 seconds and then uh, strip it back quickly. You can see the eddying motion right here. Uh, anyway, fish or no fish, um, I'm really excited to get back on this river. Last fall was a complete bust. I'm sure many of you watching like can uh, sympathize with that. It was brutal. It was like maybe a couple days of good fishing and then all the fish just shot right up into the hatchery as soon as water came and uh, I don't think many people had luck. But I think last summer was pretty excellent. I've heard good things. So hopefully I can get out here a couple times this summer. I'm also really excited for the, oh birds, those are pretty ducks. I'm super excited for the pink salmon run, hoping that DFO at least lets us catch and release, even if there's no retention. This is beautiful, the tree overhang, really nice slack water in there. If I, uh, if I was a gear fisher, I'd be laughing, but Unfortunately, I'm a purist. Cool. So I actually don't know if there's been reports of any good fishing in the area, but it's about that time of year they should start coming with all the dam bumps. I don't think it's unreasonable that there are fish in here. Probably actually more toward where I was just fishing. Actually, now that I'm here, this looks quite fast, but eh, maybe there's a little steelhead in here. Who knows?
found a nice little plank of wood here to have my breakfast. I'm gonna eat this cliff bar, have some coffee, enjoy the sound. Like, look at this view. It's pretty epic. You know, even if we don't catch fish, I don't really care. This is a great place to uh, spend a couple hours all alone. Okay, enough of that nutrients into the body nonsense. I would think this is where the fish would start and then moving into the, the as the run gets deeper and slower and the tail it kind of tails out. It's super gravelly here. You guys can see it's like it's like 16 inches deep. It's really quite shallow. I just want to get a sense of if there are any fish over here. Even if I spook them, I don't care. I'm, I'm cool with spooking them. The water's coming at me right now. I don't see anyone in the shallows. Yeah, I don't think there's many fish in the system yet. It's not in front of me. Could always be a, a handful in the, that deep stuff. Definitely possible, maybe likely. Come down here with a float set up, might smack it out of the park. You can see the sun just starting to hit the water over there. It's quite beautiful. But. It's time for us to go into the jungle. I kind of love this part. I like the fishing, but one of the reasons I love fishing so much is because I love being outside. And the fishing part is kind of just like a game I get to play while I'm outside, which makes it more fun. But one of the other super fun parts is exploring and just seeing the vegetation and nature and switchbacks. Well, thanks for watching guys. If you want to help me out, hit that thumbs up button. And uh, I am so ashamed. If you want to see more of my adventures, you can hit that subscribe button. My last video, I went crabbing with a new friend, and it was awesome. I limited out on Dungeness, and it was my first time ever. So, go watch that if you haven't seen it yet. I'll put it up here or something. Okay, take care of yourselves. See you guys in the next video. Bye. Thank you.